Hello everybody, doing a short video here. This is going to be a video on Robert Breaker's position on the majority text. Okay, this video is only going to focus on one argument concerning King James only, and that is majority text position. If you wish to make comments about King James only for, for other reasons, they will not be accepted down below. So please watch this video and you're welcome to comment concerning King James only on this subject majority text okay this video also is not about condemning or judging uh, Robert Breaker I appreciate his ministry I agree with him almost everything except a couple of things okay this is this is a a video on correction not judgment I love Robert Breaker I think he's a great man of God he's brought a lot of people into the faith growing in their faith all right I'm gonna to try to keep this short so I don't want to focus on those things now I'm going to be talking about the majority text and I'm not going to explain what the majority text is so if you are confused please watch Robert Breaker's own video which I'm going to uh, show clips of on the first one there's gonna be two videos and you can find him talking about the majority text versus the minority text and you can find that video here it's called the blood the book the blessed hope for robert breaker's full video on the subject itself great video i quite enjoy it just there's an error in it which i'm going to discuss here now there was a second video on he was recently on another uh channels called uh i'll put the title of it here the name of the channel and then the video uh, i will link to uh, put clips of uh, from that video. I'll link to it here if you want to watch that full video. Okay? So, here is Robert Breaker's first clip from his own video on what he says concerning the King James Bible. It is the only translation, English translation, from the majority text uh, uh, text. Okay, so here is what he has to say on the majority text, and the King James is the only translation that comes from the majority text. Here is that clip now. I want to show you what I mean when I'm talking about the Alexandrian text. Because the King James Bible is the only Bible that comes from the right source, and is the right Bible that doesn't take things out or add things. All new versions come from a completely different line of text, a corrupted line. Fast forward, where do new versions of the Bible come from? The King James comes from these texts. So the King James, the KJV, comes from the right place that you would go to look for a Bible for those that believed in not changing and not corrupting the Bible. Over here, we see the line of the corrupt Bible and the corrupt text. So, all new versions of the Bible come from this line of text, not from that over there. All new versions of the Bible come from this corrupt line, not that line. The King James Bible is the only Bible that is true to the originals. All these are corrupt. Westcott and Hort did their own Greek New Testament in 1881 based upon these. It's called the critical text. See, they were critical. So this is called textual criticism. Well, after them, textual critics come along. And uh, this is called textual criticism. And Nestle and Allen did their New Testament. Alright? All new versions of the Bible come from this in the New Testament, the Nestle Island critical text. If you have a King James Bible, you have what God said. If you have any other version, even a new King James, they come from the Alexandrian text. Alright, so what does Robert Breaker do when confronted that other translations exist from the majority text in the second video. Here is a clip from that video, how he responds, his initial response to those claims. Here is that clip. But I think you also mentioned that it might be that you said it's the only majority text Bible out there. Right. Um, yep. But th th there are others though. I mean, maybe you're just not aware of them, but like, game, like versions like the modern King James version, uh, the Miles Coverdale 1535, um, the English majority text version, uh, the Tyndale New te uh, Text version, uh, the um, Geneva Bible back in uh, 1557. But, I'm, but those are really those are old, except for the modern uh, King James version. I'm just 
I'm just wondering if you could clear that up and, and, and maybe that these other versions aren't just well known and they're not widely used. And you're saying basically no. the King James version is the only which, one that's widely used. That, which that's one of those brought more revival to the world than any other book in history? And sure. what book in the history of the world has sown, shown, sold more copies? All right. You see how he responded? He, what did he do? He deflected. He went to other reasons to trust the King James. But if this wasn't a legitimate reason for trusting King James to be the only source of scripture, why did he spend time using that reason in his own video? But what does Robert Breaker do when pushed on this evidence? Here is a clip on that. And they went and used the text that nobody uses today. And by the way, all new versions of the Bible are based upon the Nestle Allen critical text, which is the Catholic, Gnostic, Vaticanus, and Sinaiticus text. In all new translations, they go through the, that Nestle Allen text. The King James comes from the majority text. Now, these ones you referenced, they might claim to be majority text, but what majority text are they from? Are they using the Texas Receptus? Which Texas Receptus? There's like five or six of them. And the one that claims to be the right Texas Receptus today is the one done by Scribner that the Trinitarian Bible Society puts out. And Scribner back translated the King James Bible, and he didn't agree with the King James Bible, and he changed his edition in, in 100 places. <laughs> so if you're using his, you're going to have 100 changes that are his opinion rather than what the Bible actually says. But anyway, yeah, but I was like all the, that but say, Hold on, but something like the Geneva Bible written in 1557, from the a Geneva majority. Bible was based upon the Texas Receptus. It's a great Bible, but there are more notes in it than Bible. And the translators were Puritans. And a lot of places, they would translate a word to help their doctrine. Instead of translating exactly what the word is, they would say, well, we can stretch it, and, and it means this too. It's like, I don't want your opinion of the way it should be translated. I want the way God wants it translated. Well, of course. I, I think the point here is that uh, what you're saying is that there, there, there are other book. There are other versions of the Bible with the majority text. However, the King, they the claim King to James be. version is the most widely used majority right. text. They, they claim Bible. to be. For example, the New King James Bible claims to be. We're based upon the majority text, but no, guess no, no. what? They use the the critical they text. Use the too. All right. So what does he do when pushed with this evidence? He goes back to his first argument and claims they don't exist. Okay, that was his first thing he said in that clip there. You go back and watch it if you disagree. Just watch it and you'll see. He goes back to his first argument and claims they don't exist. But then realizes evidence does exist. And how does he respond to named examples of such translations? He makes a new claim, a more specific claim, that there now are different majority texts and different Textus, Receptus, Editions, and Versions. Again, I'm not going to describe what those are here. See his first video where he talks about what is the majority text and the Receptus, uh, the Textus Receptus. He claims all Bibles from such texts are not using the same Textus Receptus or majority text that the King James uses. However, he questions their source. And thus we know he isn't certain because he questions. He says, well, where is it from? Which Tectus Receptus? He's asking that. Thus we know he isn't certain. But yet out of his mouth, he says none use the source except the King James. This is an accusation by Robert Breaker without evidence. He made one accusation in the first video that none exist from the majority text which we now know is false because four were listed in this very video. And we see he is familiar with at least one of them, the Geneva Bible, but he denounces it, the Geneva Bible, for other reasons. Once again, did he know it came from the majority text? Yes, he stated it came from the Textus Receptus. Therefore here, he accepts it did come from the correct source, the same Textus Receptus as the King James. Once again, if it did not matter, why did he teach it? It did matter in his own video. 
Either it matters or it doesn't matter as a reason why the King James is authoritative. I'm not talking about other reasons. This is not what that video is for. Based upon what he said, the King James is authoritative because it comes from majority text and Texas Receptus. Well, so does the Geneva Bible, which he admits it comes from the same source. Robert Breaker is guilty of making accusations without evidence. He is guilty of making a statement he, know, he knew wasn't true, as he was aware of the Geneva Bible. Did he become aware of it after his first video? I don't think so, but maybe. These statements were not made in ignorance, as the panelists seem to suspect being the possibility of why this was so. Regardless, Scripture tells us not to make accusation without witnesses. Perhaps you may think that is only true about people, not arguments. These statements are not against theories, but the claims of men who published these Bibles and translations. Has Robert Breaker searched out every translation that claims to be from the majority text and found they are from a different majority text than the King James? Maybe he knew of the four that the panelists listed. But there are many other English translations that come from the majority text, and I will list them now on the screen. Well, when I say many, I think there's about 20, maybe 30 of them. I will list some of them on the screen now. Now, there are even more of these translations found on my webpage, and you can find that webpage here. But the others I did not list on this uh, video, I did not list because they are not professional or for other reasons. I do not believe Robert Breaker has personally examined the text sources of all these translations. He is in grave error and sin making an all-encompassing statement with no evidence. Even if he did, he acknowledged the Geneva Bible came from the Textus Receptus, thus pointing to the flaw of him stating this. The King James Bible is the only Bible that is true to the originals. All these are corrupt. I will not accept any other arguments for the King James only stance below in the comments. On this video, you can only refute the stance I'm sharing here and the evidence I'm giving here. If you wish to partake in such arguments with me, refute this video, then we can have those other discussions. Once again, I do not condemn Robert Breaker. We all sin, okay? We all make mistakes. Maybe it was a foolishness on his part, okay? Maybe there was some ignorance. Maybe he didn't put the dots together, okay? However, he is guilty of this. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 3. Know this also, that in the last days, men will be unyielding false accusers. He was unyielding, and he made false accusations concerning scriptures and Bibles, which we now know is, tr is he made a complete error and not a true statement in his first video. Go back and watch that first clip in this video here. Robert Breaker does need to, he does need to repent and resubmit his stance on King James only. By the way, this video will be private and not public for several days so Robert Breaker can respond to me personally. Thanks. God bless. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.